$10,000. This is the number my dad's landed on. This is the number that will somehow save him. 10,000 bucks. My dad has just revealed to me he's got over $100,000 in credit card debt. He's completely broke. Yet somehow a measly 10K is going to make things right. I am baffled. This is like a, a head scratcher down to my skull. My dad and I are sitting at the hand-painted floral kitchen table where he and I have so often shared our ups and downs, and I find myself wondering, just how much did he spend on this table, and what did he fork over for the micro-suede, fully electric sectional sofa where we watch football, hockey, and movies together, and how much for those trips he took, uh, Italy, Cancun, the Bahamas? I look back over at my dad, and he's got this, this look of shame and defeat just hanging on his face. He and I maintain this silent and solemn eye contact. The most unforeseen part of this big reveal is the fact that my dad is a retired accountant. <laughs> to make matters worse, he's talking about asking my big brother Scott for this $10,000. Scott's the one with money in the family. He's loaded. <laughs> he also happens to be the chief financial officer of a Texas home builder. His whole career inspired by my dad to be a hard-nosed finance guy. Now, my dad's asking me, do you think Scott will help? All right, there's a few things to know. First, last week, my dad was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Doctors think he may only have short months to live, and this is why he's chosen now to share the financial skeletons in his closet. He wants to get his affairs in order before he dies. Second, Scott's flying into town from Texas tomorrow morning to help with dad's finances. <laughs> He's got no idea what he's walking into. There are no finances to help out with, okay? Last thing to know is this. My, my dad asking Scott for 10 Gs, this is a fucking landmine. Scott only recently reconnected with my dad after a year of estrangement. They had a barn burner of a screaming match when Scott called out my dad for not making any effort to connect over the years. My dad and Scott, both very stubborn, so the grudge went on and on and on until Scott finally called him. Uh, my dad had a fall, ended up in the hospital, and Scott reached out. So my dad asking Scott for money is just the kind of special ingredient to turn this family cancer crisis into a family shit show explosion. My dad's looking at me. He wants to know what I think. What do I think? What do I think? You know what I think? I think I'm sick of being in the middle. Born in the middle, middle child. Pulled from the middle to this side, then to that side, always having to mediate things, the peacemaker, the peacekeeper, pushed and pulled from all sides in this family for as long as I remember, and I am sick of it. Yet, here I am again, in the middle. Of course, this isn't what I say. <laughs> Instead, I remind my dad about his rocky relationship with Scott and how Asking him for money may not be the best way to ensure a drama-free, come-to-Jesus, end-of-life goodbye. My dad pushes back. This is not what he wanted to hear from me. He starts going on about freeing up space on his maxed-out credit cards just in case. He says, you know, with the cancer, you, you never know what expenses there'll be. I, I got to ask Scott for help. Seeing my dad like this, just so desperate, it's just not him. It's actually scary. This cancer's got him rattled and not thinking straight. I spend the rest of the day dreading Scott's arrival. Start to wonder if, if I should get involved here, intervene in some way. I mean, 
I've spent at least 10 grand, probably more, on my own psychotherapy to help me deal with this type of family drama. Hours and hours and hours of sessions, over 20 years, four psychiatrists, nine therapists. Come on, it's got to pay off. I start to talk to myself. Chris, don't get involved. This is between them. They need to work it out. Hold your ground. It's not your job to fix this. As I repeat these mantras, I can't stop seeing these nightmares. Uh, the moment my dad asked Scott for money, Scott violently standing up from the table, screaming, pointing down to my dad, who then leaps up, grabs Scott's finger, she's screaming full-throated inches from Scott's face. Of course, the more subtle horror is imagining uh, a severed and divided family at a time when we need to be coming together. How can I not get involved? I just want there to be some peace for whatever time my dad has left. I'm gonna call Scott, test the waters about him helping my dad. Another complication is if I'm gonna intervene, it has to be tonight, now. Scott's leaving first thing in the morning, so I call him. From the moment of hello, I can tell by his slurred speech, Scott's been hitting the vodka. Um, alcohol makes my brother difficult, like uh, drunk fraternity brother difficult, um, like tiptoeing through a minefield difficult. I start out with small talk, pleasantries. Ah, what, uh, what time do you get in? Uh, yeah, can't, can't wait to see you. It'll, it'll be nice to be together, huh? Oh, the finances are a total clusterfuck. Yeah, we should get the tri-tip from Wood Ranch. Oh, so tender, huh? Hey, Scott, um, wonder what you'd say if, I don't know, if Dad asked you for a little help? Silence. Scott is stewing. Did he say he's going to ask me for money? I lie. Oh, no, no, Scott. I'm just, you know, I'm just worried he's so desperate and he might. Chris, stop. Stop. Okay, yeah, sure, he mentioned it. Just as I suspected, Scott is pissed. And just as I suspected, the vodka is not doing him any favors. He starts yelling about my dad blowing his money on fancy trips, Venice, Tuscany. He pivots to my dad never making any effort with him, which... Actually, um, it is fair. Uh, my dad's always been good with numbers. Relationships, mm, not so much. Uh, Scott says, there's no fucking way he's giving dad one cent. Okay, bomb's been dropped. Scott's exploding. <laughs> now, as usual, I'm feeling like I gotta control this and contain the damage. Scott, I'm going to tell Dad to squash this, okay? Dad's not thinking straight. You know, it's fucking cancer, you know? Let's just, let's just keep the peace, huh? Focus on being there for Dad, whatever time he's got left. Scott, hey, I know, you know, no promises, but come on, we got to try. Okay, Chris, I'll try. All right, phase one of Operation Peace, Love, and Sunshine is complete. Phase two. Back to the kitchen table with my dad. I tell him about my conversation with Scott. Dad, seriously, don't ask him for money, okay? Is, is 10 grand worth risking the peace we got going on here? He looks, he looks disappointed and let down. Okay, Chris, I, I guess I'll let it go. And not a moment too soon because here's Scott from the airport in his rental car pulling into my dad's driveway. We all sit down at the kitchen table, the three of us, Scott to my right, my dad to my left, and once again, here I am, in the middle. Start with, what else? Pleasantries, right? Hey, flight okay? Uh, no problem with rental? Hmm. Pretty light traffic for LA, huh? I'm smiling, uh, but on the inside, there's this, um, this heavy tightness in my chest, and it's weird. It's like I'm... It's like I'm frozen and coming out of my skin at the same time. 
And things are relatively easy going until the conversation turns to the business at hand. And Scott, he offers to go through my dad's finances. Scott, the CFO, has got his laptop, calculator, spreadsheets all ready to go. My dad, he looks, he's looking down at the pile of envelopes and receipts, folded papers, starts thumbing through them. He's been so protective of his privacy, especially when it comes to money, that this is no small moment when my dad stops flipping through the envelopes and papers and hands everything over to Scott. All the statements, all the accounts and passwords, all of his dignity. He knows what Scott's gonna find. After about an hour of Scott clicking, tapping, crunching the numbers while my dad and I mull around the house, he calls us back to the table. All right, let's get something straight. Scott has found nothing that surprises him. And everything that Scott now sees in black and white, my dad already knows that Scott knows. That's because I told my dad what I told Scott, which just happened to be everything my dad told me. It's confusing, right? So here we all are, the three of us, pretending not to know things we already know. It's kind of a combination of theater and chess. <laughs> it's Scott's move. I'm relieved when Scott follows my advice. Stick problem solving solutions, which he does, going into all the options, including bankruptcy. My dad listens <laughs> and then makes reference to his short-term needs. And this is when I hold my breath, just like, please, please, dad, do not, do not ask for money, please. I look at Scott and we both know this is the moment when my dad crosses the line. My dad clears his throat. Well, I have a lot to think about. Thank God. <laughs> my dad and Scott, they put on their accounting hats, talk about the ins and outs of the finances for a bit, and until the conversation ultimately shifts to reminiscing. <laughs> my dad riding my mom's bicycle, a women's bicycle to work five miles every day just to save money on gas because, you know, times were tough. Or teaching Scott and I uh, a proper wrist shot playing driveway roller hockey, California style, far cry from his childhood days on the frozen ice ponds in New Jersey. And once a month, my dad, driving Scott and I, not on a bike, uh, driving us to Toys R Us for a new Atari 2600 game. The day I got Pitfall changed my life. I've been so focused on preventing a family disaster. Looking across the, ki the kitchen table, I, I suddenly realized I'm about to lose my dad. And the grief comes. It's piercing sadness and tears hit me. And Scott, well, he's just not a guy who cries. And he's looking, he's looking pretty uncomfortable with all this. And my dad, he also notices my tears. So I, I stand up and I walk over to my dad and give him give him a bear hug and I'm sobbing like a baby and just crying in his arms. I'm just telling him, I'm gonna miss you, dad. I'm gonna miss you. I look at Scott and I give him one of these, come on, come over here. Scott comes over and the three of us now are huddled together, holding each other, the tears are flowing. Scott says, I love you, dad. My dad's face, it, it, it softens it relaxes and he's looking at he's looking at each of us he says you're you boys you're my guys my guys love you both after all the fear and uncertainty uh, the tension that was just consuming just every living cell in my body 
now the three of us together find some peace. Just a little, and, and just for a moment. Didn't even cost 10 grand. <laughs> In fact, it didn't cost anything at all. And even more unexpected, after fighting so hard against it, here I am, once again, in the middle, and it's exactly where I want to be. Chris Onderdog. Chris Onderdog.